time for Voice of Indy. Your hosts today are Beam Weeks, author, producer, and marketing monster for independent multimedia publisher Fresh Ink Group, and Stephen Jeeves, author, producer, composer, and publisher for Fresh Ink Group. Happy Hey everybody, another Wednesday evening. Welcome to the Voice of Indie podcast. I'm your host, Beam Weeks, and with me is my co-host, Stephen G's. Good evening, Stephen. How are you tonight? Oh, I'm Nifty King. I was uh, hanging out last night. A uh, next-door neighbor's tree came down. You've seen the trees down here. They don't mess around. Yeah. A neighbor's tree came down while I was standing out there on the deck. Luckily, it fell toward the lake, but it was like whoosh, and then bam! Man. Wow. These things weigh like 40 tons. So, and they're uh, tall. It, yeah, like over 100 feet tall. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, I've been telling people about my saga with the frogs. We had a cold snap come through, and I got to thinking, you know, they're going to have to head down to the lake, start hibernating. Many of these won't survive. And all these babies are still coming up from the lake. There's no chance that those babies are going to get big enough and fat enough in the next couple of weeks in order to survive a winter. So I broke down, went and bought a couple of terrariums. I put my big frogs in, in one, and I put the, all the little frogs in one, and went out and bought a bunch of crickets and stuff to feed them. So I'm going to bring them in for the winter. Uh, I, I, I just got spoiled hanging out with them. But it was kind of funny because last night I was looking in the tank with all the little frogs, and, and I was trying to, they were, you know, most of them were stuck on the glass, just kind of hanging on the inside. And then I saw one hanging on the glass on the outside. One of them came up from the lake and found his way all the way to the warm tank with all the other babies in it and wanted in. So he's in there with them now. And then I looked up, and there was an adolescent one hanging on the gutter looking at the other tank where all the big frogs are. It's like, well, now those are full-grown frogs, and this one's about a half-grown frog. What am I going to do with him? Um, Because the crickets I buy are as big as these frogs. And if it's too big to eat, then the frog can't eat. So I... I grabbed the adolescent and I stuck him in there and put some crickets in there and thought, well, he's either going to make it or he's not. And just, just before the podcast, I went out there and looked and he's sitting there big and fat with the back end of a cricket hanging out of his mouth. So all is good. <laughs> all right. Good job. Yeah. We had a, a little bit of a early taste of fall up here uh, earlier in the week or through the weekend and, and early in the week, three or four days of uh, rain and, low 60s which is odd for this time of year but we're back in the 80s now and and uh we got 80s for the next couple of weeks seven mid 70s and, and lower 80s for the next couple of weeks so uh hopefully we can ride that throughout. i'm hearing an odd noise in there it's it's uh sound like uh your mic's not might, might not be plugged in all the way because that's the sound i usually get when your mic's not plugged in there we go. Come uh, on. Does that sound better? Yeah. Huh. All right. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, I just I, I just, just I just jiggled it. It just popped up and it was it's that that kind of that ocean sound. All right, listeners, uh, you know the drill. Uh, tonight's guest, uh, you want to call in or uh, tweet a comment or a question. Here's how you can do that. Call 516-453-9902 right now with your questions or comments for tonight's guest. Or post a note on Twitter with hashtag Fresh Ink Group in the body of the tweet, and we'll read it on air. That's 516-453-9902 or hashtag Fresh Ink Group on Twitter. Hey there. Hey, hey. All right. Hey, hey. It's, been a great, it's been a great week for Fresh Ink Group releases. We've got three books that have been in pre-sale and are actually being released this week. They are Water Lilies Over My Grave by Patricia A. Guthrie, which is uh, was edited by Beam Week. Do you want to say something about that spooky thriller, Beam? Yeah, that's an, it's, Patricia is a, a, a amazing writer, and I don't just say that because I edited her book, although I edited her book, so I've, I've read three of her books, and she's just a phenomenal writer. Uh, she's got a knack for uh, storytelling and and uh, bringing the characters to life, so uh, if you're into really good spooky kind of stories, then and uh, thriller stories, this is one for, for your library. And uh, another one is Practical Problems, 10 Stories for the Stage by J. Ash Looney. It is out there in all editions right now for pre-sale, and the release date is, I believe, tomorrow, when everybody will start receiving their copies, and that's actually selling quite well. And uh, we do want to send our best out to author J. Ash Looney. He's, he's dealing with a family emergency right now, and we, we give him our best. 
Yes, indeed. And then the third book, and what does that one mean? Uh, the third one is Submariner. And uh, this spent the week writing the top 10 bestseller list in pre-sale. So yay, Jerry Pate, uh, fantastic. And uh, Robert G. Williscroft. Uh, just a, a fantastic uh, way to kick this one off. Uh, and uh, that's coming out this week, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right. And if you want to know uh, our release schedule of what books are coming out, you want to see the new uh, book trailers on YouTube, and you want to know about who's going to be on this show, you can find out all of this stuff and more in our newsletter. And here's how you can subscribe to it if you're not already already subscribed. Stay on top of these podcasts and all things Fresh Ink Group with our weekly digital newsletter. New releases, videos, stories, excerpts, interviews, and more. Sign up now on the homepage of FreshInkGroup.com and be the one who knows what's what. What, what, what? All right. Hey, so Fresh Ink Group author B.A. Johnson, who's the author of Sassy Discovers the AME Church, and we're putting together the next Sassy book in the series. It's uh, almost ready to go. The artwork's all finished now. The, the text is written. We're just getting it all put together. But she's having a book signing in Huntsville, Alabama, Sunday afternoon. If you are anywhere near Alabama and would be interested in attending, uh, send us a note through the contact form at freshinkgroup.com dot com and we will send you all of the information. So good luck on the book signing, Barbara Johnson. Uh, we think you'll have a lot of fun. Uh, now we've also got our print sales. You know we've got a tradition here now where we, right before the podcast I go over and check what our top five bestseller print editions are. These these don't count the ebooks. And this one, no surprise, is the number five slot, Practical Problems: Ten Stories for the Stage. It's uh, selling very well. You know, it's a little dicey sometimes when you put out a book of plays because it's a narrower audience than people who tend to buy and read novels, although you can buy and read this just like it's short stories. It's very cool. Yeah. But Practical Problems, 10 Stories for the Stage by J. Ash Looney is in our number five slot. Our number four slot and number three slot have the same title. Still Not Enough, Minority Millennials in the Workforce by Janelle A. Jordan. It's rockin' and rollin'. And both the hardcover and the softcover editions are taking our third and fourth slots. Now, that leaves slots one and two. One and two also have the same title, Submariner, 30 Years of Hijinks and Keeping the Fleet Afloat by retired U.S. Navy Lieutenant Commander Jerry L. Pate with uh, help from Robert G. Williscroft in compiling it and getting this thing all put together. That is in the number one and two slots. And I'm telling you, there's only 10 units difference between the hardcover sales and the softcover sales, and the hardcover is the bigger number. So, again, we have another book out now where we're seeing hardcovers outselling softcovers in the print edition. And this is a color book. It's not an inexpensive book. It's a 300, well over 300 pages, um, you know, hardcover, beautiful glossy dust jacket, full color printing on the interior. And people are spending the money to have that book. So congratulations, Jerry Pate and Robert Willis Croft. The book is floating high. All right. Yeah. All right. Now, listen, uh, we have three new podcast outlets. Uh, we've added those the last couple of days, and we're going to be doing more as well. We're going to get this, this podcast out there as far and wide as we can. Uh, the three new outlets. Uh, to go along with the uh, our usual outlets, uh, we are now on iHeartRadio, and you can find us on iHeartRadio at iHeart.com slash podcast, and just type in The Voice of Indy, all one word, The Voice of Indy, or The Voice of Indy, one word, uh, iHeart.com slash podcast, and uh, TuneIn.com slash podcast, same thing, The Voice of Indy, and podcast. Dot com in their search bar, just type in the voice, the voice of Indy, and you will pull up all of our previous episodes, and uh, you can listen in if you miss any. Now, this is going to go along with our usual archive, so we've got to update our archive bumper. Uh, but uh, until we do, here's those other places that you can find us in the archive. 
If you miss a show, find us in the archives in the Fresh Ink Group channel on YouTube, on Spotify, or under the podcast tab at freshinkgroup.com, beamweeks.com, and stephengs.com. On YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. All right. Hey, so you want to go ahead and roll our first commercial, and then we'll introduce this week's guest? All righty. This one would be The Hippocampus. It's a children's book by Dr. Helen Burrell. Uh, who is also, also the author of uh, American Agony. And uh, this is teaching young people about the brain. The brain. The brain. Think of your brain as a place to learn, like school. Turns out, the hippocampus is really one part of your brain that helps you make and save memories. The hippocampus, the interactive brain book, fun learning for science lovers, uses hippos to teach young readers all about different parts of the human brain. From keeping the heart beating and blood flowing to breathing and dreaming, your brain does many things for you, even when you don't think about it. This includes sneezing, sleeping, running, playing, and even digesting that meal you ate for lunch. But think about this. Without your brain, you couldn't smile or laugh or wink or read. The Hippocampus helps you decide what's happening and what to remember right now. The Hippocampus by Helen Burrell, Ph.D., offers young thinkers and readers of all ages an easy way to learn all about that gray matter that matters most. Available in hardcover, softcover, and ebook editions, the Hippocampus helps us learn about our place to remember. The Hippocampus is proudly published by Fresh Ink Group. Now, listeners, you'll probably notice a trend. All of our commercials during the show tonight will be for the kids' books that we publish because we have an author of a children's book with us today. Shaniqua A. Karanja is a wife and mother of three. She has two amazing little boys here on Earth and a sweet baby girl who lives above the clouds. As a licensed pastoral counselor specializing in several areas, Shaniqua works with people of all ages and backgrounds. She has had the privilege of helping many families as they walk through grief and loss, an area she is extremely passionate about. While working with children, Shaniqua realized that her little clients had big questions, and she wanted to do everything she could to give them answers in an age-appropriate way. So, while still seeing clients on the couch, Shaniqua is spending her downtime writing books that will help families discuss big topics, and she loves every minute of it. Welcome to the show, Shaniqua. Welcome, Shaniqua. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right. So how about you, uh, where are you from and, and where you've lived during the course of your life and uh, where are you now? Wow. Um, so I would say, and I, I love to tell this, uh, I was actually born in Boston and um, I think I was about maybe four, five when my family moved to South Carolina. Uh, most of our family is from South Carolina. And um, so I grew up in a small town outside of Charleston, South Carolina. A lot of people say to me, you don't sound like you're from Charleston. And I say all the time, I, I think it's the the North and the South combined that <laughs> disguises that <laughs> Charleston accent. <laughs> That's that Boston mingled with the Southern. So, yes. So you're probably well, like maybe an hour from you know where Green Pond, South Carolina is. You said Green Pond. Yeah, Green yeah. Pond. Oh, I don't think so, I know Green it's Pond. In the, it's in the Low Country. It'd be a little, I think, a little bit south of you, and a little bit out toward the coast, a little bit more. Um, but we have an author, Abby Gill huh. McKinney, and, se- and several authors from that area. And she wrote a book that's about the descendants of, of emancipated slaves who grew up in the Green Pond, South mm-hmm. Carolina area. And, uh, I'll have to look into book. Green Pond. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm actually more from the Low Country than anything else. So yeah, I have yeah. to look into that. The Green Pond. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's called There Must Be Something in the Water. You know, and she's kind of kind of tongue in cheek about the fact that because this book is full of like almost 50 um, African Americans from that area who went mm-hmm. on to accomplish great things. So it's a it's a mm-hmm. very um, inspirational. Um, kind of a book, and we we really enjoy that. So that's beautiful country, and well, in the process, thank you for telling me about it. We saw lots of pictures of the Low Country, and a 
all around mm-hmm. your area and stuff. So beautiful country. Beautiful so, place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, by the way, uh, when we talked earlier, we, we had talked about um, Tammy Trover's book, The ABCs of Surviving Cancer, which we're going to hear a commercial for yeah. here in a little while, and, and I told you I'd send you a copy of that. I also had a copy yeah. of The Hippocampus Candy, which is the first commercial you heard by Dr. Helen Burrell. So I stuck that in the envelope, yeah. too. So you got a couple of books coming. Oh, thank All you right. so much. I really yeah. appreciate that. My little ones will enjoy that for sure. Yeah, cool. So what kind of kid were you? Were you into reading and writing from an early age, or were you out catching frogs like me, or what, what's, what's, what's life like in Boston? <laughs> and then uh, – and then. Quite a, what a change going to South Carolina. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I was definitely not in the frogs then or now. <laughs> <laughs> so as you were telling that story, I was just fighting the crawling of the skin thinking about frogs. Um, it's funny. Um, I was, I would say that I was a pretty good kid. I loved, loved, and still do today, love to read, love to write. Um, I have a twin sister, and the two of us, we would – sit around and read we just basically gobble books we it's one of our favorite things to do still to this day we literally read the same books uh and we call in the middle of the story and be like oh my goodness can you believe what's happening it's really funny that we still have that that link between us does she also write she she actually does write um she has actually published a journal recently um, called the Lupus Warrior. If and I'm sure she's listening. If you are listening and I got that wrong, sis, I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, published under Angela St. Julian, but she is a lupus uh, fighter herself, and so she has published a book about that, and she's working on some other projects as well. So now did you a- write? Did you write it all when you were a kid? I mean, did you write little stories or anything like that or not until you were older? I did. I did. I loved to write. Uh, actually, poetry was probably my biggest thing to write at one point when I was a kid. And then I started writing little short stories. I had an amazing uh, English teacher. To this day, I say that she basically she's the one that kind of steered the course of the direction where my life went. But um she would come into class and tell stories, and she was just so animated. She really made me fall in love with not just reading, but with the thought of writing as well. So, do you have any? Do you have any of your your uh, poems that you wrote? Uh, would you ever consider publishing them in a collection of poems? Uh, maybe not the ones I wrote when I was a kid, but I have some poems that I wrote. Uh, when did I write these? I think 2014, 2015. They're they're a little dark because um, <laughs> I was going through a rough patch in life at that point. But I've actually contemplated putting in um, a little a little coffee table like book or something like that because it was it's grief related. So I've contemplated it. I'm just I'm still thinking on that one. Yeah, I mean, there's. I, I just read, just finished reading a, uh, a a book of poetry from another author that uh, uh, she's just uh, phenomenal at writing poetry. She writes other stuff as well. And there's a there's a market for that right now. I'm seeing a lot of those uh, poetry collections out there right now. You're talking dark poetry. Well, I mean, Plath mm-hmm. wrote dark poetry. I mean, that's it's just part of the human psyche. Yeah. It's part of the experience. It's, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe Fresh Ink Group, maybe one day you guys will see something. Yeah, Fresh Ink Group has put out a couple of poetry books recently too, including uh, Joshua Stutzman's from yeah. Chaos with Love. And yeah. the way we're doing those is, you know, we're not we're, we're just we're not just filling the book up with poems, but we're hitting our vast library of images and artwork and things that we own the rights to, and picking out cool images nice. and editing those too, so that you've got a book that's like you know nice pictures along with the poems. Beautiful, I can them, imagine that. In order to dress them up. Yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. So, Bean, you want to roll another commercial here? This would All be, right. Uh, this would be about B.A. Johnson, who lives in Huntsville, Alabama. Hi, I'm Mary Margaret Fanson. My grandmother, Big Mama, calls me sassy. 
I've been a member of the African Methodist Episcopal Church all my life. I never knew why everyone was so proud to be a AME. Then I meet Gerald in Children's Church. He thinks he knows everything about being AME. I told him a lot more just to show him. B.A. Johnson has written a book about me, my brother, and our friends with lots of colorful drawings. We also explore bullying, friendship, inclusion, death, grief, forgiveness, and more. Last, we discovered that AME Church is published by Fresh Ink Group in hardcover, softcover, and all ebook formats. Available worldwide. Come on, join me and discover why I can say I'm proud to be AME. And that was the daughter of a friend of the author, B.A. Johnson, who volunteered to do that for us rather than having to hire a professional. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, Shaniqua, I tried what to kind get of, my uh, little one. What's that? Go ahead. I, I tried to get my little one to record the trailer for our book, and he did not want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then after he heard it, after he heard that we had to pay an actor to do it, he heard it and he was like, I could have done that. I said, I know you should have done that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, maybe we'll do the next one. Yes. So uh, being a licensed pastoral counselor and uh, mm-hmm. you just mentioned your English teacher, what kind of ed- educational background do you have? What schools, majors, did you, uh, any future plans to go back and, and further your education? Oh, boy. Yes. Yeah, so um, I started my undergrad at what was once an all-women's college in Columbia, South Carolina, called Columbia College. Um, it's, I, it's now co-ed. Um, but then I went to seminary and finished undergrad there. And I'm actually currently working on my master's of pastoral counseling at Chesapeake Bible College and Seminary. My goal is to get a doctorate. Uh <laughs> And I say all the time because I'm crazy, obviously, because I am, if I'm not on the couch working with a client, I'm studying or I'm writing or I'm being a mom or being a pastor. (laughs) So many things. Well, um, so tell us about being a counselor. I mean, is is it all children? You work with families? You work with groups? Uh, Is it focusing primarily on grief? You know, give, give us a sense of what you do. Well, I work with uh, people of all ages. So um, the youngest client I think I've ever worked with was about five. Um, and I go all the way up to my seasoned friends. Um, that's what I call my seniors. I call them my seasoned friends. Um, and so I grief is a specialty of mine. So is marriage and family and something called temperament analysis. I love working with everyone, really. It's something, it's it's great to have a career that, while is important because we need it in this world, I get to love every day what I do, and I enjoy it so much. Um, even, the, even the difficult situations, I also enjoy those, too. Cool. So, Pete, we have a couple of callers. Yes, we do. Uh, uh, why don't we say hi to Dr. Helen first? Uh, I real see quick. her number up here. We're going to yeah. do Dr. Helen. Hello, Dr. Hi there, Helen. Guys. How are you? We are hi, doing hi, well. Dr. How Helen. are you doing? Thank you. Oh, well, it's a slow process. I just had a tooth extraction. But listen, oh. guys, uh, oh. I like um, what, you're, what I'm hearing. And um, I want to say congratulations to Chaniqua. Thank you for mentioning oh, the hippocampus. You. Yeah. and uh, American Agony about opioids. Um, congratulations, mm-hmm. Shaniqua. Um, Thank I have a question so about the evolution of a writer. May I ask mm-hmm. you? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay, so from the time you wanted to be a writer until now, can you describe how you developed your writing process confidence? Huh? Or just the your writing confidence. Process. The process itself, it's interesting. I write based on how I'm feeling. Um, And I know that sounds strange, but writing for me is a healing thing. So with the type of work that I do, you can... I I agree with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
with but the type I mean of work that I do. From the time you began as a novice writer early on in your mm -hmm. life, how did you evolve to an excellent writer now? Oh, excuse me. Um, I would say that it really. Where you feel com where it you went, feel so confident? Yeah. I don't know that I can say that I am 100% confident when it comes down to writing sometimes because there are times that I still kind of over nurture what I'm working on and and I hesitate to release it because it's so personal. So I, mm -hmm. I would say that I'm still in the process of developing that confidence, you know, um, and, and prayerfully I'll get there. I'll get to the place where I feel more confident about what I release. Hmm. That's very poignant. It sounds to me like everything you've done sounds like you've really evolved into a mature writer. Yeah. Aww. From the very Thank things you. you've I've, done. We have something in common. I, I'm also a counselor, you know? Ther oh, therapist. I love that. But it, so you it, absolutely takes, a, understand. it takes a while, Shaniqua, to go from starting out as a poet and evolving into writing longer mm -hmm. manuscripts. And feeling yeah. secure as you move along, right? It does. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of uh, nights crying. or And for me, like, I still like to write uh, not just using my computer. I like to physically write. So there's a lot of erasing and second-guessing. And But eventually I got to the point, and I think my husband really helped me with this, where he said, you know what, stop going back and rereading, just write. And trust yourself. Just trust what you're putting uh -huh, down. Aha, you arrived. That's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's exactly yeah. where he got me. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. You do have to trust your process, right? And Thank mm -hmm. you for the information. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for congratulations. your question. I appreciate that. Thanks, thanks, thanks for, for calling, calling in, you. Dr. Helen. Now, uh, Bean tried to call and check on you a few times, but we discovered I had given him the wrong phone number. So we've got that straightened out now. You'll hear from us in the next few days. Okay, great. Now I'll All listen right. to the rest of your program. And again, okay. congratulations to Nikwa. All right. Thank thanks. you, Dr. Helen. You have a you yeah. have a good night, Dr. Helen. Thank you. Yep. We got another call, Bean? We've got a couple more callers. We're gonna go with the one that came in first, and this is gonna be uh caller with the area code eight zero three. Welcome to the show. You're on the air. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, caller. Caller, area code 83404. Hello, hello. Hi, I guess that's, that's me. That's um, you. Uh, my name is, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, my name is Nicole Love. I'm calling in from Columbia, South Carolina. Um, and oh, I just, can, I, um, can I get that name again? It's Nicole Love. Nicole, Nicole. Love. Oh, Welcome name. to the show, Nicole. Yeah, Nicole. Thank you so much. Um, just like the previous caller, I have been have been enjoying um, hearing you guys talk about the book, and I actually want to hear more about the book if that's possible. Yeah, um, we we work our way up to that toward the later part okay. of the show. And then we okay, break it all well, down. I, yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, I I guess um, I'll wait, but I'm super excited to hear more about it. And um, just I'm wondering about the audience, um, like who the the audience will be. I know it's for children, but like, um, is there like an age group that you would really want, I guess, children to start reading the book if they are going through um, something similar to what the characters in the book are going through? If oh, that's, that's actually a really <laughs> great question. Thank you, Nicole. Um, mm -hmm. The book is, I, I say this all the time when people ask me, it's written for the family, to be honest. So it really doesn't matter to, you know, I believe that even if you are two, three years old and your mom and dad are reading it to you, or you are 12, 13, and you stumble across the book, the, I, I wrote it with the intention of, the family being able to take comfort in it. And so although it is a children's book, it's written specifically so that um, mom, dad, and or whoever is reading it to the little one could also take comfort while they are in the process of trying to comfort their little one as well. That's powerful, very powerful. Yeah. 
Now, you know, we've, uh, we mentioned earlier Tammy Trover's book, The ABCs of Surviving Cancer, and that was her goal, mm-hmm. too, was to make it something that the families would share, read together, you know, maybe the older mm-hmm. kids would read it themselves. And she was also hoping that the older kids would like, take it to school, share it with their friends, yes. you know, take it outside or whatever, yeah. because, you know, in this case, a child who's undergoing cancer treatment might might be hairless and have to explain right. that to everybody. And I mean, everybody wants to know what's that, what's, that? Yeah. what's going on, you know? Yeah. And if you have a book, then well, you've got something you can look at and have a conversation. And it sounds like your book would work very well that way, too. I would think so. But, you know, it's interesting because um, my little ones, when they go to school at the beginning of a school year in elementary age, they normally ask the child to tell them about themselves. And my kids will say that they have two other siblings. They they include our angel baby. And so that can be confusing later to the teacher because when they're talking about a child that's not here, um, it can throw them off. And so uh, when my little one was in kindergarten last year, he told his teacher that I wrote a book. She said, you should bring it. And he did. And then she reached out to me and told me she liked the book, but it wasn't appropriate for school. (laughs) So uh, it's it's interesting. I think it's because of the subject matter being a little bit um, heavy of a topic, and it's hard for uh, teachers to have to try to field that topic. So I wasn't saying that I understood. You think it was the religious angle that that, that made her reticent? I don't know, because when I wrote this, I I actually did my best to steer clear of making it overly religious. I wanted to make it so that it didn't matter who was picking the book up, whether they were Christian, Hindu, it didn't matter. That's why I didn't use terms like angel in the book itself. Um, But she said to me that it was because I it was the topic itself. I think she just didn't want to have to worry about oh. explaining to parents, like, why their yeah. kids are coming home asking about. <laughs> Learning about yeah. grief. Yeah. Death and grief. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, well, you mentioned, you mentioned your, you know, your angel baby and your, your two other children. Tell us a little mm-hmm. bit about your, your current family. Well, hold on a help, second. Help. Uh, N- Nicole, uh, did you have any more questions or comments? No, um, that was that was a really good answer to to my question. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, thanks Thank for calling. Thanks for the call. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now. Uh, so, so how how old are your children? And, and tell us about your husband and tell us about your family. My, so my husband, his name is Benjamin. He's from Kenya. We've been married twelve years. Um, our first miracle baby, if you will, uh, Benjamin Jr., he's eight years old now. And uh, baby Samantha would have been in the middle. She's our, our one that we lost. And then we have a six-year-old named Kingston. Um, they all keep me on my toes, all three guys. <laughs> keep me on my toes. <laughs> keep me busy. They really do. And they're great, great kids. They're very smart. And uh, you got a pretty good feller for a husband, too. Oh, boy. He is an amazingly supportive man. I mean, none of the things that I do would be accomplished if it were were not for him. Because everything that I say I want to do, if I'm timid in any way, he's like, we're going to do it. Let's do it. So he really pushes me and he supports everything. And he also is a great critic when he has to be as well. (laughs) Terrific. He'll let me know if I'm off track or something. He'll tell me. Great. Well, it's time to run another commercial here, and then we've got another caller. All right. Okay. Princess Lil is a sad pony. Her little girl grew up and went away. Now Lil is in a scary place with lots of mean ponies. A fun furry farm cat called Taffy and a nice roan horse named Pearly try to help. It even looks like Princess Lil might have a chance to cheer up special needs children, too. But she is already too hurt and too sick. Princess Lil is about the differences between loyal friends and those who bully others. It shows the power of caring about ourselves and the people who look out for us. Is it too late for a sad pony in a scary place? 
The answer just might depend on how much we all love Princess Lil. Grab copies of Princess Lil for all the little girls in your life. Available worldwide in soft cover and all ebook editions. Or you can share the audiobook as read by author Nell Cooper. Princess Lil is proudly published by Fresh Ink Group. All right. A fine book. Yes, it is. Uh, I remember reading that one uh, many, many years ago when it first came out. I believe I even reviewed it. All right, let's go to the uh, phones and uh, take this caller here. Uh, this is uh, area code 256. Hello, caller. Welcome to the show. You are on the air. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hi there, guys. This is D.A. Johnson calling from Huntsville. Yeah, when he said when he said 256, uh-huh. I had your number. <laughs> what, what, well, I love what a great opportunity. I'm lucky tonight. I didn't know you were going to be uh, highlighting my book or anything, but my lucky night. Thank you so much. <laughs> there you go. Hello, Miss Shaniqua. How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm just fine. Congratulations on your book. That is wonderful, oh, you. and you couldn't be with a better group of people than Fresh Ink Group. Oh, they're they're wonderful. They are taking care of me. Thank you so much. Very good. I have one question. With yes, all ma'am. that you do, your family and your activities and your counseling uh, that you do with uh, families and kids, when do you find time to write? <laughs> Late at night or sometimes in between sessions. Um, For me, again, writing is a very healing and calming thing for me. So sometimes if there is a, I would say, a very heavy session or something's going on, or maybe, you know, I just spoke with a child that's going through something a little difficult, um, I like to write right then because not only does it calm me down internally, but it helps me to get on paper immediately um, what the dilemma was because sometimes it it springs forth uh, an idea for another project that I need to do because my goal is already my goal is always to create things that will help families to deal with some of the the hard questions and the hard topics. So I, I kind of write in between sessions and sometimes late at night at the end of the day. So would you say that the inspiration for your writing uh, is your sessions with the kids? Sometimes. Um, the inspiration for this series right now uh, came from my own personal loss, um, but some of the projects mm-hmm. that I'm working on right now come from either some of the sessions that I've done or sometimes I have people call and they have questions that they want me to help them figure out how to explain to their children. So um, any of the children's book projects that I'm working with, um, working on, they they come from um, some of the situations that I see in office or people call about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry for your loss, but thank you so much for writing a book to help kids understand grief and loss. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I I truly do thank you. And thanks for calling in, Barbara. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Have a good evening, y'all. Always good to hear from you. You too. Good good luck on your book signing this Sunday. And like I say, listeners, anybody can be anywhere near Huntsville and you want the info, uh, send us a note. We'll we'll get it to you. Yeah, take take pictures. Take pictures, Barbara. Yeah, take, take pictures, pictures. Of, the, of the book signing and send the pictures to us, and uh, we'll put them in the newsletter and and uh, on the on the website. Yeah, I will certainly do that. I will certainly right. do that. Have a good evening. Now, yeah, have a great evening. Right. Thanks, Barbara. Now, Beam, we've been a little bit uh, lax over here on Twitter. Uh, yeah. Did you mention that. Did you mention for Wayne's Vela yet? No, I haven't. For Wayne Greenhall on Twitter, he says, My Vela murder investigation in the marsh is complete with 46,500 words and 40 episodes. The Audible version is nearly ready to go, and as soon as the mandatory 32-day wait period in late September, the ebook and the paperback will be out. And uh, you can find this on hashtag Group. There's a link to it. 
So just go on Twitter and hashtag Freshing Group and look for Verwayne's uh, tweet and uh, hit that that link. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, right at the start of the show, Verwayne also posted a tweet. Big V in the house. I'm not sure whose house, but I'm here ready to listen to tonight's at Voice of Indy podcast live at 8 p.m. EST. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there are reports coming out of Central Florida about an intruder in somebody's house, but there's no word on who it is yet. <laughs> Uh, uh, and the next one about that, you got a Marlena Beam. Yeah, Marlena Smith Burris. She says, join the fellows of Voice of Indie Podcast as they chat with author, speaker, and pastoral counselor Shaniqua A. Karanja tonight at 7 p.m. Thanks yeah. for the support and the promotion, Marlena. And then Joe Conjol says, hello, everyone, with a smiley face. And he says, Beam, you're cutting in and out a bit tonight. Everyone else is coming in fine, just an FYI. Now, I'm not hearing you cutting in and out at all, so okay. uh, I don't know what well, that's about. And then you've got uh, another Marlena. Uh, yeah, Marlena says, uh, the encouragement from English teachers. I was fortunate enough to have the same encouragement, and there's nothing like that. I agree yeah. 100% with you there, Marlena. I had some Man. really good English teachers myself. Uh, I'm telling you, they made they made a big difference in my life. And, and one of my favorite yeah. stories is when I was in college, I was majoring in psychology, and the head of the English department at the University of Michigan asked to sponsor me for for doing an English major. And I said, well, hey, thanks, but I'm not doing an English major. And he said, you know, <laughs> you can you can do two. You can you can get a double bachelor's degree. You can do psych and English if you want to do that. It's an extra you know, 154 credits and a lot of work or whatever. And I said, yeah, I'll think about it. And he said, think about this. And he gave me some of the best advice of my life. He said, there's nothing you're going to do in life that you will not be more successful if you're a good communicator. Do the English degree, too. True. And 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 now here I am. Mm-hmm. I have a publishing company in my retirement years. Who knew? You know? And I think maybe he might have. Um, he but, knew. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so English teachers and English professors, we're going to include them in the group, too. Now, over on Twitter, yeah. Moraine, Wayne Greenho did say at Fresh Ink Group, good to hear from Dr. Helen. And, yes, it's good to hear from Dr. Helen. We've been worried about her for the last couple of months, you know, after her medical scare and stuff. So it's good that she can call in and check in, and everybody knows she's she's doing better each week. Uh, and then you got a Joe Conjol there. Yeah, and Joe Conjol says, hi, Shaniqua. Thank you for what you do. Hi, My daughter is going through a oh. tough time right now. Her mother-in-law has stage 4 cancer and is oh, not no. expected to make it through the week. Sometimes it's hard to know oh. what to say. Any words of comfort you could suggest? I would say the most important thing is just to be there and don't don't stress yourself trying to find the right words because they don't exist. That's just the truth of it. If you're there, if you're checking in, if you are just letting them know how much you care about them, that's that's the thing that actually matters the absolute most. They'll remember that, how you made them feel more than they'll remember actual words. I like that. We've all seen people get into a crisis situation and not know how to, what to do, and they say, well, what do I say? What do I say? And really, what you say doesn't necessarily matter as much as how you say anything, even if it's yeah, just exactly. not here or something but, like yeah, that. It's the how, the feeling, there. it's the connection. Being a shoulder. Stuff like being that. a shoulder to cry on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, Marlena Smith Burris says, that's such a great great question, Dr. Helen, referring back to Dr. Helen's question. And Shaniqua, your response was lovely. I think writing helps a lot of people with healing, even when we don't realize it. No question, Marlena. Okay. All right. Yeah. Great. So you want to roll another commercial, Bean? Uh, sure. Let's see. We've been talking going. about this book. We've been this talking the about it. Of surviving Cancer. There it is. Cornelius is our cancer fighter. He's here to make our days much brighter. It's his job to help you know you're never alone wherever you go. Cornelius will guide and show you too. So let's fight the fire of cancer in you. A is for alive, that's what I am. This is my story and how it began. When cancer came in and changed my days, changed my thoughts, changed my ways. Hi everybody, my name is Tammy. 
And like so many of you around the world, I too am a cancer survivor. I wrote the ABCs of Surviving Cancer, Alive, Beautiful, and Courageous, for people of all ages. My book is fun, informative, and most of all, heartfelt. It's a way to give confidence to young people, as well as families and friends, to educate those who know a young person facing the challenge of cancer, and to bring everybody together with empathy and understanding. This book is beautifully illustrated. The ABCs of Surviving Cancer guides us through the alphabet with a 16-line poem for every letter. Some of the topics include C is for Courageous, H for Hope, J for Joy, O for Own It, P for Patience, T for Truth, B for Victory, and Y for You. Join me in this journey of reassurance and understanding and share it with the people you love. The ABCs of Surviving Cancer is available in hardcover, softcover, and popular ebook editions such as iBook, Kindle, and Nook. Order yours through every major bookseller worldwide or through my website, TammyTrober.com. The ABCs of Surviving Cancer is proudly published by the Fresh Ink Group. All right. Fine book. We highly recommend that. Yeah. Uh, Bane, Bane, we got a couple more comments on Twitter. Yes, we do. Uh, Joe Conjol says, thank you, Shaniqua. I appreciate your answer. I will just simply be there for whatever they need. And Marlene and- Smith-Burris says, hey, I'm not too far from Huntsville. That's true. <laughs> she's she's in Coleman, which is uh, yeah. probably 90 minutes from Huntsville, maybe 60 minutes, something like that. But a uh, beautiful area down here in North Alabama. Yeah. So, Shaniqua, we're curious about your writing process. You know, we've talked a little bit mm-hmm. about how you try to squeeze things in between sessions or whatever, but, I mean, mm-hmm. do you have any, like, bigger uh, parameters that you work within? Like, do you set daily goals? Do you have a, a word count that you try to achieve? Do you only do it at certain times or in certain conditions? Or, or what? what's your process? Well, um for, for projects that have not been published yet, there are some that I'm working on. I like to basically uh, write based on the characters. So on certain days, I'll focus on one person and, and build that character out. And then when I have all of the characters built out the way I want, then I break down the process of how do I want it to begin, what's the problem, what's, how is it being solved. Uh, I think I over overdo it sometimes to be honest but that's how I that's probably why I don't have a lot of the others finished just yet but that's the way I enjoy writing it, it's fun for me to do it that way do you do a lot of pre-organizing like outlining or you know character notes or things mm-hmm. like that or do you just kind of jump in I would say outlining um thank I you. outline <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you <laughs> Yes. Quite Yay! Another outliner. <laughs> I, I probably outlined too much, but I, I, it's one of my favorite parts of the process, actually. Yeah, it, yeah. it is for me too, because that's when it's yeah, easy to here. to move move big chunks of story around and deal with concepts and ideas right. and stuff without having to sweat the details yet. Um, I, I yes. like it a lot. I think it's a it's a fun process, and when you get your outline fairly tight, it's a it's a way that you could verbally tell that story to somebody before you actually start writing it. So that's, yes. that's very cool. Look, I want to clap. <laughs> and you <laughs> <end up> clapping <laughs> inside. Yeah. All right. Get me. All right. Well, we're getting to the point now that we want to we want to talk about your series, but we're s- still squeezing these commercials in. So we're going to squeeze one more commercial in here, sure. and, and then talk about nursery in the sky. Sure. Hi, hey, young adults. I'm author Ellie Combs. Check out my first three novels from my mythology series where Greek goddesses help us teens resolve problems from bullying to relationships. Now in print, digital, or audiobooks with music and sound effects. Book one is Daisy Bold and Beautiful. 
After a moment or two of silence, laughter filled the room, and students quickly began comparing notes on who had read the direction and who had fallen for the trick. DJ shared a smile with Hudson, as they both belonged to the Figured It Out group. Book two is Miley in the Mirror. Sam shot a cocky grin in Miley's direction. She didn't want him getting the idea she was fangirling on him or anything, and run the risk of future game invitations. Mad Max and Sweet Sarah is the new third book, so we're still producing the audiobook version. Go to FreshInkGroup.com or your favorite retailer to learn more and order now. Yes, and an update on the Mad Max, Sweet Sarah, and Sweet Sarah uh, audiobook. I just wrapped on the production end of it. Now we're waiting on some uh, line rereads from the uh, voice author, our voice actor, and uh, that should be out once I get those installed and put in there. That should be out uh, relatively soon. So uh, keep it, keep your eyes on the newsletter for that one. And if you're not subscribed, get over to the freshinggroup.com and subscribe. Yeah, we're going to have some fun on the publicity on that because the actor is Ethan Drew, who's starring in a movie that's supposed to be coming out in the coming months with uh, Christopher Lloyd. Uh, Doc Brown yeah, called, from Back yeah, here. yeah, the movie's supposed to be called Camp Nowhere, and they're, they're planning... Um, Corbin Blue is also a co-star in that, and they're planning publicity tours, appearances on talk shows and things like that, and he's going to slip in every opportunity he can get away with to mention that he just voiced this audio for, for young Ellie Collins, too. And by the way, Ellie Collins, that was her that you heard talking there. She wrote that first book at the age of 11. These are novels. Novels. Novel. She wrote the first one at 11. She wrote the second one at age 12. She wow. wrote the third one at age 13. And we published all three of wow. those. And then and then she got interested in a few other things. And right now she's she's uh, an archery champion. And at 15, she's got her murders permit. So Ellie's rocking and rolling, too. Yes, she is. Mm-hmm. Now, the Nursery in the Sky series. Uh, tell us a little bit about how this came about. And I uh, I just got through reading both of the books, and they're beautifully illustrated and just, I mean, they're well-written. And uh, how did all this come together? And tell us about who did the illustrating as well. Well, so um, we I wrote these books actually right after I lost um, our little one. Back in 2014 is when we lost her. I think that I wrote, I wrote the books a few months after the loss. Um, it was in the midst of writing some of the dark poetry that I mentioned. Um, and I knew that I would want to do something with them when I was ready. I just wasn't ready at that time. And so um, in 2018 or 2019, I approached an illustrator about uh, working on the project. We were doing, we did a lot of negotiation. We were a signature away from getting her because I fell in love with her work and all of her samples. And right when she was going to sign or we had a meeting for the signing, um, she told me that she was expecting a baby herself and didn't feel comfortable illustrating a book that was about infant loss when she was expecting her first baby. So... That was a hard, hard moment, but I absolutely understood it. Um, And so I waited a year, and then a little more time passed, and I asked if she was ready to get back. And it was just something that she decided she herself wasn't going to proceed with because, again, it was something that was a little heavy for her uh, with her with the new changes in her own life. So. Um, I approached someone else. They decided they wanted to be anonymous, but they've done an amazing job with the illustrations, the colors, everything. It's one of the things that a lot of people talk about, how much they they love, um, just how bright it is, very inviting to little ones. And so I'm hoping that yeah, eventually he will change his mind. Very child-friendly, <laughs> and it's the kind of artwork yes. that, that, that pulls the, the child in. Yes, it is. It really is. My little ones had a lot to say during the editing and revision process as, as it relates to illustrating. They they would say, okay, no, we don't like that toy, or can you change the wall color here, things of that nature. So they, they were very much involved with with all of that as well. So the two books are called Nursery in the Sky. That's number one. Mm-hmm. And then the second one is and special the, delivery from from the nursery in the sky. 
Yes. Uh huh. So the first one is about basically um, when the family first experiences a loss, and the second one is about a rainbow baby. And in the infant loss community, community, a rainbow baby is a baby that comes after a loss. They call it a rainbow baby because it's a rainbow after a storm. Um, and so that's what the second book is about. And this book, the second one, Special Delivery from the Nursery in the Sky, comes out on September the 23rd. Wow, good timing. That's a beautiful mm -hmm. concept, the rain, a rainbow baby. Huh. Now, I've never heard that before. Mm -hmm. yeah. And... Uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming that your, you know, uh, the arrival of your youngest was probably your biggest inspiration for book two, right? Oh, absolutely. So, um, Kingston, my youngest, uh, he, I had already began the thought process of writing the second one before he actually came along. I just didn't finish it. Um, but I started writing that one because the hope was that maybe we would one day have a rainbow baby. And then when he did come, uh, I knew I was going to need to finish it because <laughs> the first one has little Benjamin in there, and Kingston is going to get old enough one day to say, hey, where am I? So <laughs> I had to, had to finish that second one. And, and there are actually there are going to be four, four books in this series. So the third one is a coloring book, and the final one is, been a, is actually called Nursery Pets. So it's about pets, and because that's another question that we get a lot is it relates to kids when they lose their pets. And so the book will have the little pets in the nursery with the little kids who are up in the sky. Really, wow. really, really pretty. And do you have a book three in mind? Yes, uh, book three is, um, that one's called Butterflies to Kindergarten. Uh, that one is a part of the series, too, and that one is about a child leaving home to go to school after a loss because uh, children really struggle with anxiety, separation anxiety, um, after a loss in their family. And so I wanted to write a book that would help as it related to the fact that that is a struggle and um Perhaps it'll be something that a parent can read to their child when they are ready to leave home and know that they'll be okay. And um, it's that one's going to be very special to me. Also, they yeah, all well, will be. They all they're all very special. Yeah, yeah. no question. Mm -hmm. Now we had another caller who dropped. Now caller, you've still got some time if you want to call back in. Uh, we're still taking questions and comments for Shaniqua Karaja. Phone number is five one six four five three. Nine nine zero two. Yeah. Shaniqua, go ahead. I was going to say, Shaniqua, uh, how were you published? Uh, what's your publishing journey like? We got a lot of author listeners, and they're usually interested in how mm -hmm. uh, we all each publish because some of us do some different things yeah. and some of us do some common things. So, how were you published, and what mm -hmm. was that process like? So I chose to self-publish through my own company called Karanja Group, LLC. Um, for many years, I worked for Amazon's uh, original company. It was called On Demand Publishing um, Book Surge, a lot of people remember it as. Um, and they later became Create Space. So working there and kind of being behind the scenes of the process, and that kind of always made me feel like, hey, I would eventually self-publish something myself and so uh Karanja Group L L C that's that's who I published through. Cool. Well I'm glad just glad you made it all work out. So uh Beam, our mm -hmm. caller called back. Uh yes. The caller did Great. call back. So let's go to the the line. Hello caller, welcome to the show. You are on the air. What is your name and where are you calling from? Hello, this is Derek. I'm calling from Houston, Texas. And Hello, Derek, welcome all to the show. Here. Thank you. Okay. First of all, I've never seen a more beautiful illustration of love and loss and how love is truly never lost. So thank you, uh, wow. Ms. Karanja. I would like to know thank you. how has the reception been getting your books into libraries, churches, bookstores, because it's just really something that anyone could benefit from, whether they've personally suffered loss or someone in their community or family has suffered a loss. Yeah. 
Well, thank you for that question. Uh, you know, it has been a hill to climb, I would say. Um, again, the subject matter, although the book is very light, I believe very helpful. And once people get a chance to see it for themselves, um, I think that they would understand what it's about and what I'm trying to do. But it's been a bit of a journey because when people hear that it's a storybook, a children's book about infant loss, they tend to be a little um, hesitant, if you will. So we're still working on that. We actually um, we have just been invited by a local toy store in our area called Blue Skies and Sunshine. They are going to be a, the home to both uh, of the books for right now. So we're really excited about, about that. They are the first store that has been open and receptive to the project, and they're really excited. Um, I've actually had a few people send me pictures of the book on the shelves, so it's so we're we're making progress. We're making progress. Well, right. thank thank you for what you've done. We shared the book with our two children, and it's accessible and relatable for them in a non-threatening way. Thank you so much for your ministry and for the book. Thank you. Thank uh, thanks for calling, Derek. Yeah, thanks for calling, Derek, and we hope to ha have you call in again in future podcasts. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so Janique, Janique, what, uh, what, what's the fan reaction been? Have you had any uh, any comments from from readers? Uh, Notable reviews. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Children coming up to you and talking to you. <laughs> Uh, no, no children, but um, I've had a, a lot of mothers come and talk to me about how much it's meant to them to be able to read something to their little one, especially right in the hardest moments of their lives. Because although as a mom, once you've lost a child, you're you're in agony there, but you also have, for some of us, living children that don't understand what's going on or why mommy's sad or why mommy's crying. And so those who have spoken to me have felt comfort knowing that they have something that they can kind of read and, and be feel how they feel, but also include their little one in it so that they can also get that understanding out there and that comfort at the same time. So that's been nice. We have a, a really big, a large infant loss community here. Um, and they've been extremely supportive, and it's been good to be able to support them in turn. So normally we ask if you have advice for authors, but in this case we're going to ask you, what advice do you have for families and everybody out there, and then specifically authors? For families, I, I think the biggest thing I'd want to say is that grief is an experience that impacts the whole family. And children learn how to process losses from the adults in their lives. That's their first introduction as to how to process. Um, so I want to encourage families to try not to ignore or minimize their child's grief. And because the truth is they need to be able to understand that that ball of emotions is something that they will experience many times in their life. And so um, just understanding the importance of giving that, that child space to feel what they feel and also responding to their question in age-appropriate ways, that's so important. Okay. So how can uh, how can uh, people contact you on social media? Do you have... Twitter, blog, website, Facebook, Instagram? I do. I do. Um, the website is scaranja.com. That's S-K-A-R-A-N-J-A.com. They could also find me on Facebook. The name is author Shaniqua A. Karanja. I am on Twitter. Twitter handle is at Karanja Shaniqua. And um, if they need to email, if anyone has any questions or just wants any help or guidance in maybe finding grief support in their area, I'd love to help them with that. The email address is info at escaranja.com. And I do want to also say if anyone is interested. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was going to also say that if anyone's interested in purchasing the book, it's available at Amazon.com. And um, for anyone who's in the Camden, Columbia, Elgin area, um, it is located at Blue Skies and Sunshine. Um, and we're going to be doing a book signing on September 23rd at 4.30 p.m. So we'd love to have you come out and and uh, purchase a book and I'd love to sign it and maybe talk to you and your family about your own grief process. Wow. Yeah, send us some pictures of that event. And, of course, when your third book is ready, we'll talk again and we'll put it in our newsletter and make sure that our, our listeners can uh, be aware of that. It's a very valuable series. I love very, that. Very important work. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And I'd love to come back. Mm-hmm. Great. Now, um, after we thank uh, Shaniqua, we're going to sign off here by playing our last commercial before we close the show, and that was going to be about children overcoming disabilities. Lady Bird, Sean Sixth Sense by, uh, 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 oh, gee, I'm blanking on her name. Uh, Bean, yeah. what's the author's uh, name? <laughs> yeah. I'll get up real quick. Yeah, we'll think um, we'll think of it as soon as we sign off. But at any rate, uh, thanks again for coming on the show, Shaniqua. It's definitely an interesting, exciting, important series, and it's very poignant and beautifully illustrated, well written, and we're we're proud to have you on the show. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. I really really you. appreciate it. Um, yeah, Gracie Gracie Bradford is the author. Gracie Bradford. There you go. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got a lot of. books. Published now. It's not like the old days where we had a handful yeah. and you and you you know they were always. We got I mean hundreds now and. Now, now that I'm what Shaniqua calls seasoned, I'm I'm, I'm blanking more, <laughs> more more and more often. Yeah. Well, we but, uh, uh, now keep in mind, everybody. We've got uh, uh, more coming next week. We've got Larry Jorgensen who's written several books about the Coca-Cola industry and the history and all that kind of stuff. And he's got a book out now about a shipwreck that he just did a tour up north, and it's selling like gangbusters. He's doing very well. Very interesting character, Larry Jorgensen. He's going to be our next guest. And then who do we have after that, Beam? And after that, we have our good friend Marlena Smith-Burris is going to be in here with us uh, talking about her latest work. And uh, she's always a good good, uh, interview, so tune in for that. Yeah. After uh, recent, that. Recently, we had thriller writer Caleb Pertle III as a guest on the show. Uh, a couple of weeks, we're going to have his wife, who's a mystery writer, Linda Pertle. And we're certainly looking forward to having her. And then uh, you think we're going to get this next one pulled off, Beam? The next one we have uh, would have to be a pre-recorded episode. It's Harmony Kent. She lives over in England. And uh, we had... Tried to get the connect show this past Monday, but there was all kinds of technical difficulties, and we were never quite able to get it. But I'm going to work on rescheduling this. Hopefully, we can get her in next week and get it recorded and put put that up for a pre-recorded episode. Uh, um, but you know, that's just one of those things uh, where sometimes it works uh, overseas and sometimes it doesn't. So we will see. But after that, we have. Uh, we have Jan Sykes, who we've had on the show before, and she's got some new material out, and it's always fun talking to Jan from Texas. So Jan Sykes will be the next guest after the pre-recorded Harmony Kent episode. And what's happening next? And then we've got Marcia Fox. She's been on before, and this time she's bringing her co Pete Rising son. Uh, they've written, uh, been writing a series of Native American uh, books and uh We'll have them both on, and they'll be sharing what these books are all about, and uh, you can find out uh, for yourself. Uh, Marsh is a, a, a wonderful author. so Yeah, she's a great lady, too. She, she used to be a NASA scientist, and uh, yes. she's just she's got stories. Uh, and then we've also got Avanti Centre, who I'm not very familiar with yet. I'm looking forward to learning more about her, but she's going to be our guest uh, after Marsha Fox and Pete Rising. So. Yeah. So we've got some people scheduled. We've got a bunch more on the list, and we're getting all this stuff put together. Um, so we're going to sign off now. Thanks again, Shaniqua. Thank you, Shaniqua. Thank you. It's been an honor having, having you, you on both. the show. Okay. And, I thoroughly uh, we'll, enjoyed myself. Thank you. And we'll see everybody next week. This is uh, Lady Bird, Sean's Sixth Sense.
See you next week, everybody. Hi, I'm Sean, and I'm Ken. Ladybird is my beagle. Right from the start, I knew she had special powers and that we could share secrets. I was the coolest kid at school before the accident hurt my ability to see. Then, I became a kid with special needs. I was not always close friends with the kids I started calling feel, hear, touch, and taste. I mean, we would play sometimes, but then I needed help learning a new way of life that takes friendship and trust. Ladybird helps a lot, especially since she has special needs too. Ladybird understands how each of us has our own challenges to rise above. I would really like to tell you about Ladybird and what she does for my friends and me. Our story is in the book, Ladybird, Sean's Sixth Sense, by Gracie Bradford. Gracie is a really cool grandma who writes these I Am stories about kids finding new ways to be their best. You should check out Gracie Bradford's book. A great one to start with is the one with me and the world's coolest dog, Ladybird, Sean's Sixth Sense. Live, every Wednesday, your voice of indie hosts, Beam Weeks and Stephen G, welcome authors, musicians, publishing industry pros, artists, and assorted creative guests for an exciting interactive hour. Call in during the show or post questions and comments on Twitter for responses in real time. Meet your favorite indie creators, learn inside tips, network, and promote your work. At Voice of Indie, you can spend time with guests such as Country Music Hall of Fame drummer Mark Herndon, Sci-Fi Master Robert G. Wilscroft, Med Expert Dr. Helen Burrell, The Tippins of Rockers Wide Track, Sports Writer and Photographer Stephen Hargis, Broadcaster and Author David Carroll, and International Author Sally Cronin. The link for each week's show is pinned on Twitter atop at Voice of Indie, and you can receive the link every Wednesday morning in your inbox by subscribing to our newsletter at freshinkgroup.com. Check out Voice of Indie every Wednesday on Blog Talk Radio and catch hundreds of episodes archived everywhere from our website to our YouTube channel and Spotify. You've been a part of Voice of Indie, a production of Fresh Ink Group. Spread the word, support our guests, then find us at freshinkgroup.com and be sure to hashtag Fresh Ink Group.